Hello, I am Paul Earhart, the double bass professor at the CU College of Music. This weekend, we are having our third double bass yes workshop, affirming that yes, the double bass is great and we love playing it. Bassists who have already registered for the workshop have told me, I love the deep sound. I like to feel the vibrations in my body. Playing the double bass helps take my mind off everything but the music I am playing. I really enjoy exploring sounds, tone, and harmony on the bass. I also like how natural the sound is compared to an electric and how much the instrument can contribute musically being the foundation for other instrumentalists. Playing the double bass brings us great joy, and this joy spreads to people listening to our music. Whether you are relatively new to the double bass or have been playing for a number of years, the workshop is designed to help you improve your skills as a double bassist. Our Double Bass Yes workshop will be a kind of retreat, a time to refresh, a time to get new ideas, a time to meet other bass players in the double bass community. We will slow things down and take a systematic look in a sequential way at some of the component parts that go into playing the bass. You will gain valuable information and skills to make bass playing even more enjoyable for you. These component parts are things that I personally think about every day in my own bass playing and my teaching here at CU. They provide me and my CU students with a strong foundation for all the music we play. As you know, playing the double bass is actually very complicated. It demands a lot of brain power both for what goes on in the left hand, fingering, notes, and in the bow arm, producing the sound. Our primary focus this weekend is going to be the left hand. Specifically, we are going to explore many of the things that our brain has to keep track of when we play a two octave E major scale. Before going into more details about the workshop, I want to play for you the E major scale that we will be using this weekend. I'm going to turn on my electronic tambura. This is an instrument from India, and this provides the E drone. It's actually an E, a B, and then a high E. And I use this to keep track of where I am in the E major scale particularly when I'm going at a slow tempo, which I'll do at the beginning of the scale. So I'm hearing the pitch of each note that I want before I play it. So I'm creating a pitch target. I hear a pitch and then I aim for that and then I play that note.
It was fun. Beginning slowly enabled me to think about pitch and the left hand technique of finger shape, the way my fingers are connecting to the string, and the smoothness and security of my shifts. I had a little pivot shift here. Pivot shift meaning I keep my thumb in one place and I just move my hand, I pivot on the thumb. You can see that. So I'm going for the C sharp, I pivot up to the D sharp, and then I pivot back to the E. So. Then I pivot up here to the G sharp. Smooth shift. The rosin isn't working so well today, and I'm getting some squeaks. Dryness, coldness, it happens. Don't worry about it. So as I got going faster and faster, my attention shifted to listening to and enjoying the smooth fluid motion of the musical line of the scale. Still feeling the strength and stability of my left hand technique while always staying loose and relaxed. All of the things that happen at a slow tempo are also happening as speed increases. Right? So the way I feel at a slow tempo is the same way I feel at a fast tempo. I don't freak out at the fast tempo and get tight. Because as soon as we get tight, we slow ourselves down and the rhythm becomes erratic and uh, it, it's just is a mess. We have to stay loose. In the workshop, I will be showing you how to experience these things in your own playing. There are actually at least 19 different components that our brains need to keep track of in just the left hand while we are playing the double bass. We will talk about all of these 19 components in the workshop. For many of us playing the double bass, our brains can get overloaded at times with all of the things that are happening pretty simultaneously when we are playing. Note names, fingerings, left hand shape, shifting, bowing, and reading music. The goal of the workshop is to give you tools for increasing your awareness of these different components so that you can increase the skill in playing well. I have prepared two pieces in E major for the workshop that will give us the opportunity to zero in on these 19 components. Each piece uses the same fingering for the two octave E major scale, and it's this. One, one, four, one, two, one, four, two. And that's the fingering I used in the scale. The first piece is the E major two octave scale preparatory shifting exercise which I'm calling Looking Behind Every Corner. Looking Behind Every Corner is designed to give you time to zoom in on small portions of the E major scale, looking at all the shifts and all of the notes within each position that we encounter in the two octave scale. So right here we have, we have an E and an F sharp. We're gonna look at that. We have the G sharp and the A. We have the E to the D sharp. We have the shift from the A to the B. We have a B and C, another hand shape. And we have the shift from the C, pardon me, C sharp and then C sharp to D sharp. That shift from four to two. Playing with the play along audio that I will be sending you we use our ears to match pitches as a means of developing our awareness and control of pitch as a primary tool for training the proper left hand finger spacing and accuracy and shifting. Right, So we're using our ear to tell us whether we are correct or not in the left hand. 
The second piece, a hill and a valley, is the expanded two octave E major scale that I just played for you. Beginning on our lowest note E, open E, and going all the way up to this E in fourth position on the G string. A hill in a valley has a little hill at the beginning. We go up and come back down, and then we go all the way up. And has a little valley on the descent. So I like to feel that I'm climbing a little hill, coming down, and then going all the way up. And here, going down a little bit, coming all the way up, and then all the way down. So it's, it just makes it fun. And so that I, I see this contour. You know, we have all these mountains here in the foothills and climbing and hiking. We're constantly going up and down. So I can relate my playing of a scale to just being outside in nature and walking around. And that makes it fun rather than just slogging away playing notes. As we will see in the workshop, a hill and a valley gives us a lot of fun possibilities for developing our skill in moving around the double bass with clear awareness of pitch, note location, and relaxed movement of our left arm and fingers. I hope this introductory video has given you a little bit of an idea about what we will be exploring this weekend. I look forward to seeing you at Double Bass Yes. Feel free to email me if you have any questions and please spread the word to your bass playing friends. See you soon.